taking a shape and changing it in some way while still preserving the properties of the original shape. If you look on page 86 at the chickens, chickens on page 86, the original chicken is at the top and if we transform the chicken it won't necessarily be the same chicken. It can be squished and uh, what we call the aspect ratios, the proportions of the chicken could change. We do not want that. If we transform the chicken, the proportions of the chicken need to be the same. So there are different ways to do that. Now we, we're not gonna draw chickens. We'll stick to basic uh, geometric shapes but we're going to do four transformations. First of all, we will scale it. We could maybe double the size of the chicken or cut it in half, but it's still proportionally the same chicken. So scale it. Actually, I'll do scaling instead. Then we can do what we call a translation that is just a fancy word for shift or move the object keep the object the exact same size you're just moving it to a different location why do they not call it moving I don't know translation then we will look at a reflection where we're given the object we're given a line and we have to create the mirror image of that object in that line. And we'll see how to do that eventually. I'll just want to give a preview. And then we will rotate the chicken. Oops, rotate. Everything is still the same proportionally. It's just turned by a certain angle. So all of those transformations will have different methods and we'll slowly work through them <clears throat> starting with the first one. Now I will say in the beginning so that you don't feel overwhelmed, ch this chapter is a little bit bigger, more things in it, a quiz question will only take one of those four and ask that one. Here's a shape, maybe a triangle to keep it simple. Do a translation to a new location, just that, or just number three, or just number four. The portfolio assignment number three has all of them in one. So you make a shape, you scale it, then you take that result and translate it, then you take that result and reflect it, then you take that result and rotate it. That will not be a quiz question. That takes a lot of time and effort and careful measuring. Quiz question will just be one of those four in isolation. And that will be page, what page are we on? The unit conversion is page three. So four, page four. But we are gonna slowly work our way through it. it there's more to it uh, that I don't wanna rush. So obviously the first one, scaling first. But in order to even understand the instructions of what we have to do, we just have to set things up a little bit. And that is where we need to talk about the scale factor. Scale factor is really the ratio or fraction as I'm now changing the original shape, right? So it's the new, uh, oh, let's call it side lengths, where we will mainly focus on a simple polygon over the old or original side length. Now, in the case of a chicken, it's a little bit more complicated, but still, we'll just keep things fairly simple. The proportions stay the same. Everything is scaled 
by a specific ratio, and we'll call that the scale factor. So that specifically refers to the length measurement. Specifically refers to the length measurement. Okay. Now we'll just do this by example. Uh, exercise 12, 1. And we'll see the wording as we work through these uh, exercises. 12.1, number 1. So we're going to use, usually, whenever I need a symbol, I'll just use a K for scale factor. Just out of habit, if nothing else. So we always have some reserved symbol. We don't have to define it or anything. Whenever you need to, you can use a K, and that'll always mean the scale factor. So now, in number one, it says a side length of whatever shape changes from 70 yards to 130 yards. So then my scale factor, remember, is mu over O. So it's going to be 130 yards over 70 yards. Now, I'm not going to trick you on purpose and make the units different, but you do always have to check that the units are the same. They have to essentially cancel. The scale factor doesn't have any units. If there is some situation where uh, 70 meters changes, change to 130 yards, then you have to make the units the same first before you can find the scale factor, but we'll try and avoid that. So I have 13 divided by 7, and then you say one point eight six. So now what does that mean? We have different ways of different kinds of scale factors, depending on the, the number that we get when we do this calculation but also different ways of referring to the scaling of an object. We can refer to it by way of the scale factor, which is going to be a number, usually with some decimals perhaps. But we can also interpret this, interpret, or we have to, uh, as a percentage change or just a percentage, sometimes a percentage change, it really depends on the wording. Now, we have done some of that in 142, but some of you haven't done 142, some of you blocked it out, some of you have just forgotten, so we'll just do it again. How do I interpret this? Well, there are different cases. If my scale factor is greater than one, well, first of all, I guess if it is 1, the scale factor of 1, I'll put it in here. If k is equal to 1, it means nothing has changed. It's the exact same as the original. So that refers to the original. So now if I have a 1.86, that means the new figure shape or whatever is bigger. It's an increase from the original. So if k is greater than 1, we look at the difference, I guess, to 1, which in this case is 0.86. And then that to a percentage. How do I make that a percentage? I multiply by 100. Gives me my percentage change, in this case an increase because the scale factor was greater than 1, by 86%. So I want to be able to use the scale factor whenever I have a calculation issue, but the interpretation is more convenient by way of percentages, or the question might give me the information as a percentage, and I have to be able to go to the appropriate scale factor before any calculation is done. 
Any questions on how to interpret a larger scale factor as an increase by a percentage? I just look at how much more than one. One is sort of my baseline original, and the extra turned into a percentage is the percentage increase. Any thoughts on that? No thoughts? Familiar? Maybe. Maybe. And that always makes it a little easier. Do I have space for number two? I do not. Then let's look at the other side of things. In number two. Number two. Where a uh, side length changes from eight centimeters to five centimeters. So is my scale factor eight over five or five over eight? New over O. Five. I'll keep track of the units, just in case they're trying to trick me. Making sure all the units are the same. 508, 0.625. Now, sure, we said we can round it to two decimal places, but because I only have three, I'll just write them all. So now, I have something less than one. So if k is less than, than, one, it means my original was one. So now I've made a smaller new shape. I just want to lay it out the same as we did here. So I'm going to go and look at the difference from one. In this case, it is 0.375. That, I make a percentage. And again, this isn't the only way. I just want to do it like this for consistency, based on how the questions will mainly be phrased. And I, that is times by a thousand. Uh, not a thousand, a hundred. And then I get 37.5%. Actually, let me just phrase it the same way as before. Four, it is a decrease by 37.5%. There we go. So the decrease case could be a little less obvious in that the percentage isn't the decimals that I see, it's the difference. It's always from one up or down. So if, like we'll see in the second exercise, they tell me a percentage change, and I need a calculation for what the new side length will be. I need to go from the percentage to the scale factor first. Yes? I don't understand the difference from one part. Like if one minus 0. 0.625. If it's less than one. Yeah. But if well, you look at the difference either way. But if it's more than one, it's just going to. The difference is much easier because you literally just throw away the one and look at the decimals. They're right there. You still you take away the one because the one is the original and you're looking for the change. But in the case of the scale factor being less than one, it's not as simple as just throwing stuff away. You have to actually minus, one minus this. But it's the difference in both cases, yeah. The, the increasing one is just easiest right there. Not much to do. So you almost don't think of it as a difference. You just look at the decimal portion. But it is technically it's one. minus one, yeah. Because one is a smaller one, I take the bigger one minus one. But in the case of uh, of it the other, being the other way around, I take one minus the smaller number. So whatever is bigger minus smaller, it's a difference. And then I just have to make that a percentage which is always the same. So we'll get used to it the more we do it. So I'm just trying to get ready for all the variations of the questions wording. That's the main issue. That is the main issue. So we have four cases in exercise 12.2. 
and we want to calculate the new side length. But before we do number one, let me just make an observation. If k, my scale factor, is mu over O side length, that means that the new side length is k times the old side length. So whichever one I need to use is going to be the second one in this case based on what they want and what they give me. They're going to give me the original and the scale factor. I need to find the new one. So in number one, they tell me the original side length is 70 and it's scaled by a factor of 0.9. So they give me the scale factor directly and I'll just use it. So 0.9 times 70, that will give me a 63. Uh, it's always nice to have the units there, but not crucial. So it's the simplest case is where they just give me the scale factor. There's no adjustment or anything. I just plug it in, multiply, scale it. And because it's 0.9, I'm going to have a smaller side length. There, the original side length is always 70. Scaled by a factor of 1.2. Again, that's the scale factor, no adjustment required. I multiply it. 12 times 7 is 84. Nothing to do. But it's when they give it to me as a percentage, I need to be a little bit more careful. So the formula is, if you want to think of it as a formula, it's very simple. It's just an adjustment. And depending on the information, I have two versions. Uh, formula. Any questions so far? It's very quiet. Is it because it's too easy? I'm boring you? You're falling asleep? Or is it because you have no idea what's happening? Then you have to say which which part do you not like? All of it? Just, just all of it? Scrap all of it? All of it? It's garbage? Let's see how we feel about this next one. So the formula I have to just remember. And I have to remember that it refers only to side length. In a short while, maybe next week, we will look at area in instead, and then the formula is not the same. This is the length dimension formula. Okay. So, number three, the original side length is 70, of course, it's always the same, increased by 10%. So I need to figure out what is the scale factor before I go to this calculation in the box. It's an increase by 10%. I have my base 1 or 1.00. I'm going to write it like this. Plus the decimal version, version, version of 10% of the change. That means K is 1.10. Try to make it as clear as possible. So you have your base one because they say it's an increase on top of that by 10%. So I'm going to go to the decimal version, which is dividing by 100. Depends on which one I have, which one I want to go to. That's the issue. And then I'll use that K in my calculation and get 77. So as long as I remember, presentation-wise, whether I'm presenting an answer or the question is presenting information, that can be a percentage. But any calculation, not a percentage. I need to go to the appropriate decimal number. Four. Side length is 70, it's decreased by 20%. So what is your scale factor? Now I'm going to go down because it said decrease. I'm going to go 1, which is my base original, minus the decimal version of 20%, which is 0.2 which gives me a K of 
zero. You don't need a zero, but I'm just emphasizing 100 minus 20 is 8. So it's very important to know, is it increasing, is it decreasing? Then I'll go <coughs> up and down from my baseline 1. Then mu equals 0.8 times 70. which is 56. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Thank you.